4.1, and now I'm going to continue some of the um, more difficult questions from the textbook. Number seven is a question that shows up a lot throughout the textbook where you have to find variables of a function that satisfy certain qualities for the function. For instance, this one says find the constants a, b, and c such that the graph of f at x equals x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c will increase to this point and decrease to this point and then continue increasing. Okay, so that looks pretty difficult, doesn't it? And a lot of students look at that and say, I don't know even where to begin. So what you want to do is, first of all, look at this equation. It's a cubic function. It said it's increasing to this point and then decreasing and then increasing. So in other words, it's just basically a cubic function that's doing this, right? It's increasing to minus 318, decreasing to 1 minus 14, well, probably much lower, and then continues to increase. So that's all it is. So these two points here, this minus 3 and 18, and 1 and minus 14, they're telling you that these are maximum and minimum values. So this is a maximum, and this one's going to be a minimum. So what are we going to do with that? You know that if you are at a maximum or a minimum, then there will be a horizontal slope there, and that slope is going to be zero for the tangent at these two particular points. So minus 318 is a max, and 1 and minus 14 is a minimum. They tell you that right in the question. Now, what else do you know? Well, you know that you're in a calculus class and the first thing you should do is take the derivative, right? Let's take the derivative of the original function. Always take the derivative. That's why you're in calculus. So I get 3x squared plus 2ax plus b. So notice I've got rid of the c, so that's going to be a little problem. I'm going to have to find that later on. So now I've got it into this little quadratic equation. And I do know that for both of these points, at x equals minus 3 and x equals 1, the slope will be 0. So I'm going to write that out here. Slope is 0 when x equals minus 3 and x equals 1. So I know that to be true. This has zero slope because I'm at a maximum and a minimum. So if I set f prime at x equal to zero and sub in x is minus 3 and x is 1, I'm going to end up with two equations. Right? So let's try that. So sub in x equals minus 3 and set f prime x or f prime at 3 if you want equal to 0. So that means 0 equals 3 times minus 3 squared plus 2a times minus 3 plus b. Okay so it's I've written this out a long way just to make sure you don't miss a step here. So minus 3 squared is 9 times 3 is 27 and this is going to be minus 6a plus b and this is equal to 0. Now I'm going to do the other one right away so I'm going to sub in x equals 1 and set f prime at 1 equal to 0. So 0 is going to be equal to 3 times 1 squared plus 2a times 1 plus b. 0 equals, well that's 3 plus 2a plus b. Okay, so now you're going to do a little trip down memory lane back to grade 10. Grade 10, you have two equations, right? I'm going to write this out in green for you. Two equations and two unknowns. Do you remember? Oh, I ran out of room for that. Two equations and two unknowns. How do you solve two equations and two unknowns? 
and notice that they are nice little linear equations. You did that in grade 10. You found the point of intersection by using something called elimination or substitution, whatever one you want. So I'm going to rearrange these equations because this is just zero on this side. And I'm going to say um, 6a, I'm bringing this over here, minus b is equal to 27. So that's equation one, and I'm going to put it right there. And I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm going to leave the 2a plus b, and I'm going to bring the 3 over to the other side. So that's going to give me equation 2. It will be from here. So that 2a plus b equals minus 3. And now look at that. How do you do elimination on this? Well, the signs are different. Um, in grade 10, I would have said, if it has the same sign, you subtract. But they don't have the same sign. They have different signs, right? A minus and a plus. So if I add these two equations together, hopefully you remember this from grade 10. If I add these two together, I get rid of the Bs. I've eliminated them. And I have 8A is equal to 24. So I divide by 8 and I get A equals 3. Hooray, I found one of the variables already. So now I can find B because I can use either of these equations. So I'm going to say if A is equal to 3, then um, 6 times 3. Could you use either equation? Minus B is equal to 27. That's 18. So minus B equals 9 and B is equal to negative 9. Okay, so right now you've got 80% of the question right. Well, we hope it's right. So we've got A is 3, B is minus 9, and I need to find C. Okay, now looking back up here, when I took the derivative, I eliminated the C. So this function, this derivative function, isn't going to help me find C. I'm going to have to resort back to the original function for the equation. And that's this equation here. I'm going to write it out. So I know that f at x equals x cubed, and I'm going to plug in what I know. So I know a is 3, so I have 3x squared minus 9x plus c. So how am I going to figure out c? Well, I have two points here, right? These are points, original points on the graph. So I'm going to plug in, I'm going to use, um, let's use uh, 1 and minus 14. So you can see that if I plug in x is 1 and f at x, so that's my y value, is minus 14. So I say, okay, well, minus 14 equals 1 cubed plus 3 times 1 squared minus 9 times 1 plus c. And look, I'm going to get my c. So this is 1 and this is 3 is 4, minus 9 is minus 5. I add 5 to this side, that gives me minus 9 equals C. And so therefore, it just said, find the constants. So A is equal to 3, B equals minus 9, and C equals minus 9. Okay, so that's a pretty difficult question if you didn't know how to start it. But once you've seen one of these, like, you know, well, if, if it increases, I know this is going to have, like, this is where the slope is zero. So I set it to zero and I solve for A and B, use elimination, and then substituting a point into the original function to find the C at the end. Okay, so I hope you've, if you haven't tried this on your own, um, I would suggest that you do this question on your own and come back and check it again. Okay, the last question I want to do is a graphing question, and some students have trouble with this because they don't know where to begin as well. And again, it's one of these questions that once you've seen it once, I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to do it on your own. Now, it's a sketch a graph of a function, and I'll see if I can find, I have one in my, uh, my, my notebook somewhere that is really quite complicated that will really test how much you know. That... It's differentiable, so that means it has to be, there's no cusps, there's no asymptotes. It's differentiable for all values of x. And it says f prime x is greater than 0 when x is less than minus 5. Okay, let's translate that into English. 
Get it out of the math lingo here. What does it mean? F prime X. So that's the slope, right? This means slope. Slope is greater than zero. So I'm going to write slope positive positive when x is less, I mean, I'm going to put words here, less than negative 5. Okay, f prime x is less than 0, so that means slope is negative, negative between minus 5 and 1. f prime at minus 5 equals 0. So that says the slope is going to be 0 when x is minus 5. So that means this is a critical value. Right? It's a critical value. It has 0 slope there. So it's either a max or a min. We're going to figure that out in a minute. So 0 slope means critical value. So it's going to be a max or a min at x equals minus 5 and x equals 1. And finally, this is the one they should have put first, I think, because it says f at minus 5 equals 6. What is that? What is that telling you? It's telling you it's a point, right? So this is just minus 5, 6. That's a point on your graph. And this is a point on your graph. 1, 2. When x is 1, f at 1 is 2. So this is x, y. Okay, so this thing, I think, was what you should have found first. So minus 5 and 6. There's minus 5, 6. I put that on my graph. And the other one is 1 and 2. And I know that there's 0 slope here. So it's either a max or a minimum. Now, it says it has positive slope when x is less than minus 5. So positive slope means it's increasing to this point. And then it has zero slope. And it says it has negative slope between here and here. So that means it's coming down to here. And then it also says it's still going down when x is greater than 1. So it comes down and then it goes down again. So this might be a point that you haven't seen too much of before because it's kind of one of those, those wiggly ones. And I'm going to show you exactly what that means. This is, this is what we call a triple root, right? So note that in this case, there was no change in the slope. So it was negative slope and it's still negative slope. Negative, negative, but it was positive on this side. Let me get a different color. So we had positive slopes on this side we had zero slope here, and we had negative slope all the way down here and still past here. So we didn't have negative slope here, we had zero slope. And if you think of a function, do you know a function that has a zero slope like that? I'm going to show you one that does, if you haven't seen it before. And it happens to be y equals negative x cubed. So negative x cubed has one zero, right? Zero has a triple root here. A triple root means it's coming down like this. It actually has zero slope in here, and then it goes down. So this function, if I asked you what the degree is of this function, you should be telling me that this is a quartic function, because this is a triple root here, triple root, triple root, and then you also have a single root over here somewhere, right? A single root. Well, it's going to cross the axis, but if there, there's a potential for three, three roots here, one root here. So this is just like a shift up, right? So it's a quartic function, quartic. And quartic means degree four or fourth degree. Okay, so I just wanted you to see this one because sometimes students get confused. Well, how can you have negative slope and then negative slope? And conversely, you could have also had this as y equals x cubed going this way. So if you, um, if you found the critical value here, let's do that really fast. Uh, let's call this y equals x cubed. 
and y prime equals 3x squared. So critical value, you'd say 0, right? x equals 0. So if I put this on a number line, and I called this y prime, and I put on my 0 critical value, critical value is 0, x equals 0, sorry. And if I went to the left of this, I would have positive, and if I went to the right of it, I would have positive. So positive slope and positive slope. So this is neither a minimum or a maximum. Neither, am I still on the page here? Min or max. And it's also called, it's called a point of inflection. And we'll get more into that. I'm just going to write POI here. That's what I'm going to use for the short form for point of inflection. Oh, let me write it out here so you know what I'm talking about. But we'll do lots more of that as we get into um, second derivative tests and so on. Okay, so I wanted to show you those two examples um, because they're, they're questions that students usually get stuck on in their homework. And the description in the back of the book doesn't really tell you. It shows you the solution. It'll show you a graph that looks similar to this, but it doesn't tell you why you should be getting that. And I wanted to make sure you understood it very well. Okay, so that's part two of 4.1. Next up will be um, 4.2, which is more of the first derivative test and more questions. So please subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.